G'day guys, welcome to my 2023. This is going to be my key runners preview. I have done a runner by runner preview that goes for sort of 40 minutes plus. So if you're interested in any particular runner there, I'll try and break it down runner by runner in that one. But this is just going to be the, the horses I give key chances to in this year's race. We'll get straight into it, trying to knock this over as quick as we can. First thing I'll look at is the map. It doesn't look like there's a huge amount of natural speed this year. You've got sort of Serpentine kicking up from the inside, Magical Lagoon from a middle draw. You've got uh, Vorban and Military Mission, I think, won't be too far away early. And then the horses drawn wide have got decisions to make. You've got the French Mayor, you, uh, Latushka out wide, Val and Declare, Break Up, can roll forward, sat just behind the speed in the Caulfield Cup. And you've got Right You Are, Future History, that have to make a decision. Even the stable mate to Vorban, absurd. Looks like it's got enough speed to hold a spot. So not a race where there looks a huge amount of speed early and and the two key sort of on paces are probably drawn inside which cuts a little bit of the speed too they should find their positions quickly then it's a matter of whether anyone from the outside draw wants to put any pressure on so uh will be interesting i think there'll be three and four wide lines and i think they'll take off a little bit early this year so it'll be an interesting race from a, a speed position i think First horse we'll look at is Gold Trip, the top weight last year's winner of the race. He, he to me, he, he looks like he's in better form than he was uh, this time last year. Uh, we'll have a quick look at the Caulfield Cup first and then the Cox Plate. Most interesting from this perspective, we've got Right You Are Here, who's not one of the horses I'm going to talk about, but he's in the race. You've got uh, Break Up, who I will talk about. West Wind blows on his back, obviously a very good form pointer uh, without a fight on the inside. Uh, Gold Trip on the outside there. And then back in the field, we've got Sulcum as well. So main horse we're going to concentrate on here. Uh, stop it. This is break up without a fight. Gold Trip cutting through. Sulcum's already made up quite a lot of ground to try and get on the back of these leaders. Right you are at the front. Gold Trip sort of has a bumping duel here with without a fight and uh, sort of comes off second best, if anything, but without a fight, picks itself up, runs away, runs down west wind, blows, gap, gaps open up behind. Gold Trip certainly doesn't stop, but uh, battles on really well. But the, the two in front certainly got the better of Gold Trip and this is Sulcum coming home late with break up uh, just behind. So he came off that and then ran in the Cox Plate. So last year he came into the Cox Plate off the back of a, a slowish run, Caulfield Cup. Ran very, very well and then ran well in the Cox Plate on sort of an even tempo and then won a really fast run race, Melbourne Cup. This year he's come into, these are all on soft tracks. This year on firmer tracks, he's come off a really fast run, uh, Caulfield Cup and into a really fast run, Melbourne, uh, sorry, Cox Plate. He's back last year. Ends up in the middle here. This is Bangill on his inside, militarised, Jew, uh, Romantic Warrior, Alligator Blood, uh, Mr. Brightside cutting back under Zaki. So high quality weight for Agefield. Gets a nice run through, really nice ride. Hits the line really well. So a really fast run, weight for age race where they've not slowed down really at any point. They, they have slowed down on paper, but they've gone quick and gone quick. It's just a matter of <laughs> they've run really fast overall time and uh, a really high-quality race. So I, I think he's going better than he was this time last year. He carries a kilo more in this race than he carried last year, which is never easy to do. He draws perfectly. He's got James McDonald. He's got an ideal setup. He ticks every box. It's just a matter of whether he can overcome some pretty talented horses here in without a fight who handled him in the Caulfield Cup and uh, potentially, you know, horses like Vorban and Absurd coming over from the UK. So... Uh, the next horse we'll look at is without a fight. He came over and ran in this race last year under the care of Simon and Ed Crisford. He stayed with Anthony and Sam Friedman. He came up in uh, to Brisbane in the winter and just smashed up a, a couple of, you know, weaker fields than this. There's no doubt. Uh, one of those was at wait for age, one of the set weights and penalties, sat out the back and was just really dominant late uh, in good sections. Came back this preparation, was given a nice pipe, pipe opener first up over the 1,800 metres at Caulfield. Uh, we'll have a very quick look at that. Ran alongside Sulcum. So he's out the back here in the yellow, switching to the outside. And that's him running down the middle. That's Sulcum. Alligator blood, Jewa. So that form sort of ties in with the Cox Plate form. And as I said, I, I nearly call that a barrier trial. Came out and won the Caulfield Cup really well. 
The other thing I wanted to point out about this is if we watch through the line. So around the bend, this horse is certainly not stopping, running away from them under its own natural steam. All good signs stretching out to 3,200 metres, and I think this horse is probably the, the definitely the, the, the leading local hope, which is no knock on Gold Trip. I just think that this horse is, is a very, very, very good horse that's uh, is certainly in the zone compared to when it was last year, and I, and I think it can go to another level off a fast run Caulfield Cup up to the 3,200 metres here. I, I think this horse is going to run really well. Break up. I'm just going down. I'm not sort of doing this in any order. Uh, did did run in that uh, Caulfield Cup. A couple of things I want to point out. Uh, here he is here. He had a really nice run in transit. He was 118 days between runs into this race, so I had to travel 2,400 metres first up, and his best form is over further. So he gets the short back and sides here. West wind blows, comes in on top of him. That's Valiant King comes out, and then Gold Trip comes across and, and sort of gives him another short back and sides here. There he is, bang between Valiant King and, and Gold Trip. He's already tiring, you can see, and uh, and that sort of short back and sides. He sort of sticks on quite well. We'll have a quick look at his run in the, the Tenno show, which is certainly the best sort of lead up. But uh, adding in the nightmare. Yeah, so he, he's run behind Equinox since this. This day he runs behind Justin Palace. Rates that that is like high high quality Japanese. Here we saw um, winning the uh, Golden Eagle today, uh, Obama Boomerai, whatever you want to call it. It's uh, yeah, they're, they're just high quality animals that their form always measures up here when it's you know of a of a decent level. So this is break up in the in the green cap on in behind you number twelve gets a beautiful run through. As I said, if Justin Palace was in this race, I think it'd be. You know, it'd be a lot shorter than Vorban. Let's put it this way. This is the winner here, Justin Palace. This is a uh, breakup sticking on here. You can see he just he looks a lot more comfortable in this race compared to what we saw him around Caulfield. I think he'd be better for the experience. I think he'd be better around Flemington than he was around Caulfield. And I think he'd be better with a run under the belt. So, uh, yeah, I expect this horse to run really well. The, the little worry for me is the Japanese rider and uh, the draw. So uh, Kohai Matsuyama takes the ride. I'm sure he's a high-quality high rider in his own right. It's just not easy to come to Australia for the first time, navigate a wide draw. I'd love if, you know, a local was on him and, and could have pushed him forward into a, an on pace position here early and and then he could sort of get a, a chance to wind up at the big Flemington straight and run well. I still think he's a clear top three chance. I wouldn't be talking about him now if, if I didn't think so. Uh, I think 20 to 1 you know, probably a, a touch of value, uh, but he needs a little bit to go his way, especially with the... Uh, foreign rider aboard the mighty vorban is the next horse we'll look at the favorite in the race he won this race at, at royal ascot oh we're gonna cop another ad here so this was the the shortest price ascot handicap horse of his type in over a hundred years i believe so you know his form's obviously very very strong in its own right he he's been set for this race for, you know, 18 months, two years, been handled really well by Willie Munn and Valens. He knows what to do with these sort of horses, how to prepare them. He's kind of perfected it. A lot of them do a, a lot of hurdles. Uh, and this horse got to the highest level of hurdles before it was restricted to the flat, this preparation. It really handles their handicap when in they're targeting a race like this. So this is Bourbon in front. There are a few horses to highlight in this race. So we've got Bourbon in front. His stable mate, Absurd, is back in the white, second, third, fourth last year, and that is... Uh, more felons last on the fence, who is known as script writer. If you're, you're watching this race at this point, he becomes more felons when he comes to Australia. So Vorban up in front dictating, absurd back in here pulling, and I thought it was a really good effort to run second. Gets beaten seven and a half lengths, but probably doesn't lose a lot of ground from this point on. Uh, Vorban in front, you can see I love that he sort of quickens a little bit, but it's the, it's the gears that he's got that are, are really impressive. That's absurd in the white there and, and more felons back in the red cap. The further he goes, the better he looks, the, the quicker he seems to get visually. And, uh, yeah, he sort of runs. I'm not a big time form man, but runs a, a, a solid enough time form rating to to tie in with horses like sort of rekindling, counter, cross counter. I know they were sort of younger horses compared to this, but those sort of uh, ratings are at least good to line up when you're trying to work out what the level of this opposition was. That's absurd running into second, and that's more felons back here running into about sixth who 
found a bit of trouble as well. But, um, yeah, I, I think the winner certainly has got the, the form to win this race. And I think the stable made absurd, who we'll have a look at as well shortly, uh, certainly has a, a high enough level to, to run really well in a race like this as well. I wasn't copying these... Um, I wasn't copying these uh, ads before, so I'm sorry for the breaks. But this is the the Ballyroan Stakes. This is his last run. So 61 kilos here. He carried 61 kilos in the Copper House Handicap as well. Ryan Moore, importantly, had a sit on him two starts ago. He comes out and rides him here. Draws ideally. I think the weights are fair enough. Uh, you know, Impost, I think, carries 55 here, which seems uh, more than fair. This is him in the white again. Valiant King, who ran okay in the Caulfield Cups on his back, sticks with him for most of the way. This was back to 2,400 metres, 2,800 metres the day that he won at Ascot. He's won a few times over 3,200 over hurdles. I've got no issue with him at the trip, that's for sure. And I think even back in trip here, he, it just was a bit of a clean out, getting him ready um, for a, you know, a break in these 92 days into this run. Ryan Moore takes the ride. We saw everyone saw him gallop, the whole world saw him gallop the other day, and, and he looked impressive, and he looks uh, cherry ripe, ready to go for a race of this nature. Yeah, he, he's the one to beat uh, for sure. Sulkin, we do we did cover in that race. I, I, I don't think he's a top four chance, but I won't cover him in this preview. Absurd's the other horse we will cover. So this is the stable mate to Vorban. Uh, we get to see him in the Ebor here, which again is a is a great lead up. Um, it's just a sports bet a thon here. I'm certainly not sponsored by sports bet. No ads here sponsored by sports bet. We're trying to get through them. Uh, yeah, so he. this is the run after the, the Copper House handicap for him. So this is the Ebor. The other horse that we see in this race is More Felons again, who is uh, known as script writer here. So they both cover a lot of ground. I'm not sure if it was a disadvantage or not on the day. I certainly don't know the form well enough. But uh, this is this is absurd here, and this is More Felons or uh, script writer there. Wide. He ends up wide in the straight, which looks like a good position to be in, to be fair, and and more felons cops a squeeze and sort of goes back in behind a little bit. But a great effort to sit wide no cover for the entirety of this race over 2,800 metres and still have the tenacity to stick its head out. It sort of it had a run, that run behind Vorban, and then had a 3,300 metre hurdle run in between and then back to this 2,800 metre race. So this is it on the outside fence. Absurd. And back in behind there is more felons. Uh, sticks on. You know, this doesn't look like a like a super high quality e ball, but still not an easy race to win and to have sat wide, no cover the whole way and and fought on a really good effort. And I thought more felons was as well. More felons has had a run in the Geelong Cup. I, you can, I don't really think he's a top two or three chance here. Well, I, I will have a look at him very, very, very briefly just to sort of show his his local run because it's the only way we sort of tie in with his form here. And we'll have a very quick look at him, but uh, that they're the main chances for me. He did have Equicast on this race, uh, which scares me a bit, and it comes off for this race, but maybe that's a positive. Uh, he went back in the field early, so he's in the Chris Waller colours now. And the I should know the owner's colours. He's on the he's the head of the trainers association. So the green, white, with the red cap coming to the outside. Good effort, sustains a run down the outside. My worry is here that whether it peaked on the run or not, uh, this was only 13 days ago, you can see he, he looks the winner here, more felons, and just really peaks late. You see right on the line, he was nearly, you know, had enough. Uh, whether that's his feet or any issue or whether he just got tired and he has to raise a, a big level. So that's a Marte Ash run. Um, that, it's 60 days since he ran against Absurd there uh, in that race at, in the E-ball. Yeah, I, I don't know what it says. I'm going to, I'm going to say it, it's not him at his absolute, absolute best. He can improve off it. He does need to. And my tying him in and saying Absurd's a better horse than him, I probably am. And I'm saying Vorban's better than it. So uh, it needs to improve a few lengths off that, I think, um, to make it a, a serious, serious threat in this race in particular. So, yeah, for me, I, I think Vorban certainly ties in, in really well very, very short in the market, but seems fairly justifiable. Probably one of the better set up internationals I've seen in a long time. Certainly well planned out and ready to go here. I think without a fight, it's clearly the horse um, of the locals that's the the one to beat. Gold Troop, extremely well set up. I think he's in better form than he was this time last year. It's just a matter of whether this race is a little bit stronger than it was last year. 
uh, absurd is is one of the value runners in the race. I think it's sort of twenty to one. It's the favourite, the stable mate, twenty five to one. Stable mate to Vorban. I think he's a little bit forgotten and a, and a decent each way chance here. I think break up will certainly improve as long as the international jockey gives him a, a solid chance from the draw and, and more felons is a some some sort of an each way chance. But yeah, clear top two picks for me without a fight and Vorban gold trip and absurd just behind and then it sort of opens up from there. Uh, Quinella's trifectas. I'll put some numbers up after this, and if you want to have a look at any horse in particular, uh, a uh, a runner by runner sort of forty five minute job, I've got uh, up as well. This is the fifteen minute uh, more brief key chances preview. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you got something out of it. Hope we have a bit of luck on Tuesday. Weather looks good, and the track should be perfect. So uh, should be a great day for everyone, and hopefully uh, we we have a bit of luck. And uh, hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please like subscribe uh, for more content like this. It's um it certainly inspires me to want to do more of it if uh, if more people seem to to like it comment and uh, subscribe to the channel uh, thanks guys and and all the best